Now, this is, this is so wild to me, I can't even comprehend it, and I can't pretend to, but here's the deal. God said to Satan, Satan is in the presence of God. I talked about that, so I'm not going into that. Where would you come from? Satan said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Let, let, let's, let's, let's ask God to help us with understanding and clarity tonight. Father, I ask you to bless the reading of your word, and I ask you to bless the mouth of the deliverer and the ears of the hearer. Lord, give me clarity. You know I like to use a little humor along the way, but I don't want that to distract from the message. You know sometimes I know what I'm talking about, but other people look at me like they're confused. And Lord, I don't want that to happen. I want us to get this tonight because I really do believe it's important. And I pray that you would help us as a church tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. This is very familiar. I just preached from this text. But I want to change the words just a bit and, and give it to you again. Are you ready? Have you considered my servants at the Nazarene church in Moravia? There is none like them. This is God talking to the devil. This is God talking to the devil. Have you considered my servants at the Nazarene church in Moravia? There is none like them. They are upright and blameless. They fear God and shun evil. Go down there and see what you think of them. Now, you and I might say, I, I hope God don't sick the devil on us. Hello. Hello. God doesn't have to. He's already on us. But I want God to be able to say that of us. I want God to, to be able to say that of our church. You say, but, 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 but. What? But what? I'm not blameless and upright. Wonder why? Well, I, I, don't want, I don't want to have that kind of responsibility put on me. We need that kind of responsibility put on us. Now, in my opinion, I'm going to tell you what the issue here was in this day. God trusted Job. And I can't explain it to you. I, I, I'm only a preacher. But I don't think there's a theologian with a real good handle on that one. That, that God trusted Job enough to sick the devil on him. Kind of irritates me, i got to tell you. Kind of makes me say, God, <laughs> why would you do that? He killed his kids. Destroyed his crops. Why? He was a good man. Uh, there's, there is no answer. There is no answer. I don't think there's an answer except that then for the next few thousand years we get to use Job as an example. But that was the issue then. Here's the real issue for us. Can God trust this church? Can God trust this church? You see, it does not matter how we see ourselves. It doesn't matter if we think we're pretty good. It doesn't matter what we say about God. It matters what we do for God. We can know all the right words. We can, we can spell them. How many of you can spell sanctification? About six of us probably. I'm not sure if I can spell it without having a book. It isn't important that you know how to say the word. It's important that you do the word. That's the real deal. James said, do not be simply hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And my question to us tonight is, can God trust this church? Now, if you're going to sit in this church and say, well, I think he can. This is a great church, and you're looking around at somebody else, then my next question is, what about you? You make this church up. I don't care if you're a member. doesn't matter. If you attend this church, you make this church. And if God's going to trust this church, he's got to be able to trust you and me 
and corporately he will trust this church. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? (laughs) Remember last Sunday? We're talking about getting hundreds of people saved. I I think, should we expect to get half the list? We have over 200 people on our list that we're praying for by name every Tuesday morning. Should we not expect half of them to come into the kingdom? That would be over 100 people coming to faith in Jesus. And I'm saying, man, God has to be able to trust us if he's going to help us do that. I already know God's will. I don't have to say, well, let's pray and see if God wants 100 people saved. Let's call a fast. Where's Brother Shane? That man moved up here because he's convinced, well, I'm sorry, that family don't want to leave anybody out. They moved to Ottumwa because they are convinced God wants to use them to build a church, to bring people to Jesus. And see, I'm over here 30 miles away saying, what about us? I want Shane to do well. I want that church to do well. I I want them to outgrow the building. I, I want it to be wonderful. I want to see a lot of people saved. But I don't want to sit here and watch it over there. I want to see it here. I want to see it here and there. And I want my friends, when they call me from other towns and bemoan to me, I want them to instead call and say, Brother, woo! we over over 100 now. See, I think when you grow a little bit, you get over that small deal. When you grow a little bit, you quit trying to defend smallness and you start celebrating largerness. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't want a church of 23,000. That's Rick Warren's church, isn't it? 28,000 down there in Houston. Watch his face. He ain't preaching the word. How can you get 28,000 people to come to church if you... I, I don't want to say that. I don't, I don't, I've listened to him. I don't, I don't know he always preaches the word all that good either, but... See, it doesn't matter. We look at other people and judge them. I'm saying, man, God's looking at us. He's deciding us. Wow. We've got to convince God that he ought to bless this church with unsaved people so that we can help him build the kingdom of God. That's not hard, is it? That's, that's not hard for me to understand, I, and I'm slow. I was in special ed in seventh grade. I don't think my parents liked it. I found it quite easy because I really didn't belong in there. But I, I messed up some, and so they put me in special ed. I loved it because, man, it was so easy. Special ed kids, they didn't make them do a lot because they were, you know, couldn't. I was like, I'm kicking back. I'm staying here. Well, then I passed a test or two, and they booted me back up. And I was like, bummer. See, we want to look for the path of least resistance. You know what I'm talking about? That was my illustration for the path of least resistance. I am not a real smart character. If you put a book in front of me, I think there must be a door falling shut somewhere, and that's, I'll push it up against the door. I, I'm not brilliant, but I know God. God is a physicist. God is a biologist. God is a zoologist. He is a doctor. He has a doctor of psychology. God, God can do everything. He's actually a, 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 he's good at everything he does. So I just hook up with God. Man. And I want God to trust this church. And I want him to say to the devil... Look down there at Moravia. Look at that church. You go down there and mess with them if you want to, but they're going to get people saved. That's what they're about. That's what I want, I, that's what I want God to say about this church. Let, let's go back to Antioch. Let's go back to Antioch where we were last week because that's a good church too. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 